Hey, good morning, church. It's great to see you here uh, the last uh, Sunday of um, March of 2020. We're still in the midst of our uh, lockdown. We're sheltering at home and uh, still finding God faithful. I've got a psalm I want to start with this morning. I want to share with you out of, uh, it's the ninth psalm, and specifically verses 9 and 10. Listen to the application of this for yourself. The Lord also will be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Oh, how much we can learn in this time of worldwide crisis about the faithfulness of God. That those who know His name, as we seek Him, He will not forsake us. We'll find Him faithful as He has always been. And we will find Him in ways that we've never needed to know Him before. It's an intimidating time. But God's presence is powerful. Jason Gray's got a new song out right now. I don't know if you've heard it. You're going to find it, and you're going to get access to it in the first comment uh, right under this message link that you found. It's from Jason Gray, titled, Remind Me You're Here. I want to encourage you just to put a pause on this uh, video that you're watching right now. Listen to that song and see if it won't encourage you the way it has me. Because God longs to remind us that He's here. He's with us. As the psalmist said, He will not forsake us. So you go check that out, enjoy that song, and then come back up to the message link and start up it again. And we're going to go into John chapter 11 if you want to have your Bible out. And we're going to get into the Word this morning together. All right, enjoy the song. All right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that song, uh, if you managed to access it. Uh, really good stuff. This morning's uh, scripture is going to come out of uh, John chapter 11. It's going to be familiar to you if you're uh, experienced in the Bible. Uh, it's going to be the death and resurrection of Lazarus. One of the things I always do as we head into the Easter season is I just immerse myself in the Gospels and those accounts that are leading up to the death and resurrection of our Lord. And so one of the first ones that I got into in the Gospel of John was this, John chapter 11. And I've titled our time together this morning, Look for the Gift. One of the things we did with our kids when they were small, when they'd have a birthday, is we never just put out a, a big stack of presents on a table. What we would do is we'd sort of set up a scavenger hunt, if you will, and we'd hide pr presents around, maybe in the house, maybe outside the house, and then we'd write a little clue that would direct them to that location of a present. And sometimes we'd put that clue up inside a balloon, and they'd have to pop a balloon and get that little scrap of paper, that little clue out. And if they followed the directions carefully, it would take them right to uh, the location of that gift. But if they didn't follow the directions, or if they weren't looking, then those gifts would go undiscovered. As we've already acknowledged, we're in a time of some pretty significant crisis. So far, in our immediate community, we've not had a lot of uh, direct impact, but we hear of that impact uh, in places all over our country, all over the world. Um, families have been rocked with illness and, and loss of life. And it'd be very easy for us in, in that climate, or say just a, an economic downfall, a loss of a job, or a loss of freedoms that we have taken for so, so much for granted, to miss the opportunity to see the gift that God has for us in this. And I'm going to contend with you, I think they are many, if we'll just take the time to give Him an opportunity to reveal them to us. We're going to find that in John chapter 11 this morning. The first six verses is where we'll start, and here's how they read. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, 
This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Now that last that last comment it seems a bit unusual in light of the fact that uh, John just told us that, that Jesus had special relationship uh, as far as earthly companions and acquaintances, special relationship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And yet when he got this SOS call that Lazarus, who he loved, was sick, he just chilled out for two days. And he makes this comment to those who heard, This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God. Who would have thought that a sickness could somehow reveal God's glory? It reminded me, as I thought of that concept, Jesus just was the ultimate revelation of God's glory. And it took me back to chapter 1 of the Gospel of John where it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. I love how Eugene Peterson in the message translates it that. When he said, The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That's what Jesus did. Only it was not flesh and blood like we have been used to, like we reveal to each other. For what he says was that we... Beheld, we saw His glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so as Jesus was here on this earth, He was revealing to us God's glory. He was filled with grace and truth. And now Jesus says, hey, coming soon, a glimpse of God's glory. The Celtic Christians from from many centuries ago who were renowned for their spirituality talked about encountering thin places in, in the reality of life. Thin places between earth and heaven when we had a unique opportunity to catch a glimpse of God's glory. One of those is getting ready to happen right here in this account in John chapter 11. Coming soon, a glimpse of God's glory. That's why Jesus hesitates. That's why Jesus procrastinates. He just kind of settled down for two extra days before he heads to Judea. Now, beginning at verse 7 then, all the way over to about verse 14, there's some other interaction that goes on. Uh, the disciples are worried about Jesus going back to Judea because the Jews have been after him. They were wanting to uh, put him to death, and they were concerned about him going back. And Jesus says, hey, Lazarus is asleep, and the disciples didn't get it. They said, well, then he'll wake up. Just let him be. And, and finally, in verse 14, here's what Jesus says. Jesus then said to them plainly, Okay, guys, you didn't get my, my uh, 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 imagery here. Let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Lazarus is dead, and I am glad. <laughs> what did he just say? Now, obviously, if you got your Bible open, you know I stopped without reading the whole thing. But that was the part that struck me as I read it. He just described Mary and Martha and Lazarus as special, loving relationship, a kinship with them that was described uniquely. And finally he says to his disciples, Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sake. For your sake, he said, that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. You see, Jesus is up to something here. It's not uncommon when Jesus wants to reveal to us His glory in some new way, when He wants to give us a glimpse of His deity, a new opportunity to know Him in ways we've never known Him before, that it may seem the most unusual of circumstances. Maybe even circumstances that we wouldn't have imagined that he would be willing to use. 
like a worldwide pandemic. Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe. This is going to be a faith-stretching experience. And oh, beloved, how they're going to need that, because in just uh, the next chapter, chapter 12, is when Jesus enters Jerusalem for that final time. It's what we call Palm Sunday, which would be next Sunday for us that we'll be celebrating that. Hopefully we'll be back together. Not sure. But nevertheless, that's how close this account is to the Passion Week of Jesus. Oh, how they need to have their faith enlarged, and Jesus has prepared the means for that to happen. What a strange thing for Jesus to say, but He's up to something, beloved. Listen, as He always is, <laughs> He's always up to something in our lives, looking to expand our capacity to trust Him in the most unexpected of circumstances. Have you encountered some of those over the last couple of weeks? You know, maybe it was the stock market crash as you saw resources that you were counting on for the end of your journey suddenly dwindle by a third or a half and, and how some people were just frantic over that. Maybe you have loved ones. I, we have a situation like that in our small family circle where we have frontline medical personnel working in ICU, working in the hospitals, even potentially being sent across the country to be involved in the frontline efforts. We would not have expected that or chosen that, but it's expanding our ability to believe Him, to f look for and to, and to assume that they are there, the gifts of God showing us His glory. So we finally get to that point when Jesus arrives. It's, it's been days since he received that message. Let me read again. I'm going to pick up reading in verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary stayed at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> it's, let, let's not bother with... Hey, Jesus, so glad to see you. Great to see you, Jesus. Thanks for coming. Immediately she goes to what almost sounds, at least on my ear, maybe yours as well, accusatory. Lord, where have you been? <laughs> if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. What's interesting is, as you read along, when Mary finally makes her way to Jesus in verse 32, Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him, and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus finally makes his way to the graveside, there were those mourners, the Jews that had come along to be a part, to console Martha and Mary over their loss. They too said to one another, Oh, this one who had opened the eyes of the blind, if he had been here, would this man have died? Could he not have kept this man? from dying and I would say to you great observation <laughs> they'd been watching they had learned many of them they believed in the power of this God man who was walking on the earth the Messiah had come and he came with uh, the ability to to perform and to release the power of God upon the earth. True statement. If he had been there, Lazarus would not necessarily have had to die. But do you remember when, when we started in chapter 11? Jesus said, this will not end in death, but that you might see the glory of God. I'm glad I wasn't there so that you might believe. I'm up to something that you do not know. You 
you'll miss the glimpse of my glory if I short-circuited this event. If I kept this event from happening, you would miss the opportunity to see me as you are just about to see me. I can't imagine how many times we have been in situations like that. Maybe even over the last couple of weeks, certainly throughout our lifetimes, when we encountered circumstances that we did not enjoy, we did not appreciate, maybe even circumstances, beloved, that introduced suffering into our lives. Illnesses, and the loss of loved ones, tears streaming down our face. God, you could have kept this from happening. True statement. But if he had, things that we learn about him and about ourselves and about our relationship with him would have been sacrificed. Missed his glory. They were absolutely right. Jesus could have kept that from happening had he been there, but because he wasn't, they were just about to see it happen. So Jesus got to the tomb, and he said, roll the stone away, and all of a sudden Martha gets real practical. <laughs> the, the old King James said it this way, uh, Lord, by now he stinketh. That always makes me laugh. The, the, the NASB cleans that up just a little bit. It says, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been in the tomb four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Oh, the importance of faith in our journey. When those difficult circumstances present themselves, when we find ourselves in the midst of suffering, if we will just believe and assume that God is at work, He has not abandoned us, He will not forsake us, He is getting ready to do something that will allow us to see Him like we've not seen Him before. The glory of God. So they removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it so that they may believe you sent me. See, it wasn't just about the disciples. It wasn't just about Mary and Martha. Oh, and the vantage point that Lazarus had. You know what's interesting? This is just a little side note. Once Jesus pulls off the glory burst here and raises Lazarus from the dead, you know, the Jews put a cross here not only on Jesus, but on Lazarus too, because all kinds of people are believing as a result of Lazarus being raised from the dead. They want rid of him. But you know what we never one time hear? Is any testimony from Lazarus. A first-hand account of, of what was this like for you, Lazarus? The testimony he would have had. But we never, we never ever hear first-hand report from Lazarus. Causes you to wonder. I, I, I have some acquaintances that speculate that, that maybe Lazarus had some unique developmental challenges. Maybe that kept him from communicating. Maybe he had some, some developmental disabilities that would certainly lend itself to the special kinship that he and Jesus experienced. I don't know, that's speculation, but isn't it interesting? We never hear from Lazarus. But it wasn't just about Lazarus and Mary and Martha. It was also about all of those who were gathered there with them. And Jesus said, that's why I'm praying to you out loud, Father, because I wanted them all to hear so that they may believe that you sent me. At that point it says, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot and with wrappings and his face wrapped around with a cloth. He, he, what a sight that would have been to have seen him stumbling out of that tomb. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. rush of emotion. 
mouth agape, tears running down people's faces, Mary, Martha, I, I, I'm speculating that Martha, in light of her personality type, would have, would have hurled herself toward Lazarus, while Mary, the intimate one, probably would have wrapped herself around Jesus, weeping all the time, weeping and celebrating all at the same time. And everybody else standing around just saying, what on earth have we just seen? A thin place. The glory of God made obvious and apparent before us. They had received the gift of a glimpse of God's glory in the midst of what had just moments ago been a time of mourning and suffering of great loss. <laughs> But did everybody get it? Sadly, no. Sadly, no. Listen to how this, this section ends up in verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. Jesus said it's going to happen. I'm going to let you all see my glory, and it's going to prompt faith. You're going to believe, and many of them did. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done, and it solidified, it galvanized their intention to do away with Him. You know, sometimes, sometimes we hear, and have even maybe been guilty of making those comments, boy, if I would have seen Jesus bring somebody up out of the grave, or if I could just see somebody raised from the dead, I would believe... Well, don't be so sure, my friend, because right there we hear many did, but not all. Some went from that very sight, seeing a man who had been in the grave long enough to stink, according to his sister. They didn't get it. Their hearts didn't receive. Their eyes did not catch a glimpse of that glory and they rejected what they saw. Oh, but for those who believed, their lives were changed. They were transformed because they didn't miss the gift that God had provided. We are in the midst of a great calamity. It's made the world pretty small because all over everywhere we share it with people who, prior to this, we would have identified as our enemies. Places like China and Russia and Iran. And yet I, I try to be faithful to remind you, we have family in all of those places. Brothers and sisters in Christ caught up in the pandemic all over the world. While it comes to mind, remember to be praying for Haiti. We have heard that there are confirmed cases there, and if you think we are behind in our medical capabilities to deal with the coronavirus here, imagine what it's going to be like there if God doesn't have mercy on that place and stem the rolling tide of this scourge. We find ourselves worldwide attached together in the midst of this great time of travail. All sorts of implications that very well will be negative and difficult and, 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 and bad. Uh, lives being lost and suffering is happening, families being separated, all sorts of things. But let me encourage you in the midst of, of it all, just like I reminded you when we began from Psalm 9, those who know your name and seek your face, you will not forsake. You will be there. Ask the Lord to remind you, as Jason Gray said, ask Him to remind you that you're here. Remind me that you're here, Lord. He'll do that. Look for the gift in the midst of this time of suffering, the glimpse of His glory, and you will find it. Have you heard evidences of it? Time.
to slow down. How many times have you said, oh, the pace of life is just so frantic if I just had some time to slow down? Here it is. Yes, I know for some it comes at a, a, a great sacrifice economically. Listen, if you're in that situation, if, if you're going without because of it, let us know. We'll do our very best to find a way to help you. But time to slow down, time to quiet the craziness, time to make yourself available to, to God. Let Him give you the gift of His presence. He will be delighted to do so. Time to be with family, to connect with them in ways that you wish you could have. And because of all the stuff going on, so many things, you know, uh, so many of us would have been immersed in, in March Madness right now, you know, I ignoring each other, ignoring our wife and our kids, or, or, or vice versa, whatever. The kids won't give you the time of day because they, they're filling out their bracket and watching all... Sorry, it's all gone this year. Everything has gone quiet. The NBA playoffs aren't kicking off, folks. we got time to be with family. We can still, we can get outside. God has made himself known in creation. Have you heard him? Have you seen him? His invisible attributes, his divine power, his, his infinite nature being revealed through what has been made. He'll meet you there if you look. Give him that opportunity to make himself known. Listen, another, it's time to see God provide. If you're feeling that pinch, He will provide. It's a time to be generous. It's a time to experience generosity. Oh, beloved God never wastes opportunities like this to make Himself known. He will meet us in the midst of this time of challenge, of great difficulty, for some, of great suffering. But if we will look to Him, there will be a gift. A gift of hope that will go beyond this. A gift of His presence. A gift of connecting with others who are all around us and are going through this just like we are. Look for the gift you will find God faithful. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence. For it's not any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that to know that no matter what we face, you are with us. Father, thank you for this opportunity that even though we can't be together, we are together. We are connected. And Lord, I pray that you will have used my words, even more so your word, to encourage my brothers and sisters as we find ourselves in this day and hour. God, I pray that uh, you will meet us in the midst of all of this, that you will uncover those special gifts no doubt, many that I didn't even think of, never came to my mind, but others are already finding them special, delivered from your heart to theirs. And Lord, we continue to pray for our leaders all around the world at every level, from the highest levels of government, Lord, right down to our local levels of leadership. I pray for the first responders, Lord, those folks who are on the front lines of providing care. And I pray that they will have every resource that they need, Lord, that you will just providentially protect and provide for them. I pray for their families, Lord, who, who are nervous about sending them to shift after shift of labor, uh, God, on the behalf of those who have taken ill. Lord, that you will calm their hearts, that you will give them a peace, and they will find you there with them. God, I pray for those who are suffering uh, with the effects of this virus. I pray, Lord, that you will just sustain them 
I pray, God, that you will be with them. And, and those that know you, Lord, will find you faithful. Even if it turns out to be that this is their exit from this world, God, that they will set their sights on home. And Lord, look forward to joining you in heaven forever. Lord, I pray that the gospel message will continue to go forth for those who do not know you. And Lord, you will be there as well, communicating your word. Lord, for our church family, until we meet again, it would be great if we could be back together on Palm Sunday, even in some ways even better if our resurrection occurred on Easter Sunday, but either way, it doesn't matter. Our being together in a building is not what makes us the church. That is our relationship with you. So help us to be faithful to refresh it in this time of unprecedented experience. Thank you, Lord. May your blessing go out through this device. In Jesus' name I pray and amen. Hey, God bless you all. If uh, need be, you'll see me like this again next Sunday. As I prayed, hopefully we'll be together on Easter Sunday for sure. But stay tuned. God bless you all. Have a great week.